We are just a minute away to start another edition of Monarch Basketball as the Monarchs take on the Miller North Mustangs. Women just won 58 to 53 for the Monarchs. And here we go with our second edition of the night as the men head into battle. Now we should have a good one tonight. Monarchs coming off a couple big losses in a row last night. They lost to Bellevue West. Tired bodies, but they're looking to get one of their first wins in a while. Millet North is big and strong. They're gonna take advantage of this tired Monarch team and try to muscle them up. The difference maker for the Miller North Mustangs will be Ethan Morrison. He's a sophomore guard, number 13, and he's quite the stud. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna have to lock down on him. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. have the starting lineups before starting lineup for the Miller North Mustangs. We have five ten sophomore Ethan Morrison. A six one junior number twenty one Dylan Nelson. A six three junior number forty Zarek Speed and a six four sophomore Number 54, Jake Lena. And the six foot two senior, number 55, Pat Higginson. And if that doesn't get the home tired up, I don't know what will. And here's the starting lineup for the Monarchs. Number 10, Io Baker. Number 22, Jack Kalina. Number 24, Caleb Piakowski. And number 30, Braxton Murphy. And finally, number 32, Tyler Doherty. Tyler Dorn needs to play big tonight if the Monarchs want a chance to succeed tonight. He's been playing a little shaky lately. He's the only person on this team that could that actually played varsity basketball last year. Some of them were on the team, but Tyler Doherty started a couple games last year. He's definitely the leader. The Monarchs really need him to step up tonight. Braxton Murphy can also be a big difference maker if he can get going early. The Monarchs will win the tip. And Miller North showing a hard man-to-man -man defense right now. They're going to be aggressive all through the night, which that will be very important for freshman guard Io Baker to control the game and not have too many turnovers. Murphy looking... Set the ball up, move it around a little bit. There's Baker in the wing. Braxton Murphy's gonna drive, he'll find Kalina. Murphy for a three. 
That's good. Be it. The Monarchs get going early. And that's big. That's big for his confidence booster. He has not been hitting lately. And he's one of the, he's a better shooter on this team. And he needs to start playing like it. And right there he steps up early for the Monarchs. But driving it in already, that's no good. And the offensive rebound and the putback also no good. And the Monarchs will bring the ball right back up. Now Braxton Murphy again in transition. Finds Tyler Doherty. A nice Mike backdoor it. cut. That was a great cut. And there you go. You, we were talking earlier about how Caleb Piekowski and Brax Murphy need to get going early for the Monarchs to succeed, and that's exactly what we've been seeing so far in the first couple of minutes of this game. Monarchs two for two on their shot so far. There's Ethan Morrison for a three. And that's that'll good. Fall. Yeah, they're going to need to put the clamps on him throughout the game. Like you said earlier, Cal Ethan Morrison is the difference maker for the Mon or for the Mustangs rather. Tyler getting muscled up inside. Doherty, no good. That'll be 55. Pat Higginson on the rebound. Tyler might have been looking for a foul call there, but not gonna get it. Morrison on the wing. He'll shoot another three. That's no good. Murphy on the rebound. Yeah, and I'm sure. Murphy sure, shot no good. And I'm sure head coach Tim Cannon for the Miller North Mustangs is giving Ethan Morrison the green light in this game. Telling him you're a lot more quicker and athletic than a lot of these Monarch players. If you can score, go ahead and do it. Higginson inside. Lean on, no good from the elbow. Doherty with a rebound. Doherty, the tallest player on the court, he's 6'6". Six, six. Working the ball around are the Monarchs. Ethan Morrison playing on Baker. Braxton Murphy swing the ball around. Doherty will drive. Doherty's gonna lose it. He'll covered lose by it. the Mustangs. That's a turnover. So far both teams might be having a little bit. Both teams are just a little bit too sloppy with the basketball. Both teams need to clean up their game and work the ball around to set up the offense. Ethan Morrison playing good defense on Baker there. And they're going to lose the ball. Another mental issue for the Monarchs. And that's two turnovers in a row. And you just can't have that if you're the Monarchs. There's more, there's a better chance of you making the shot if you just pull up from half court than you have throwing the ball out of bounds. Because you might make it one out of every 100 times shooting it from half court, but you're never going to make it if you don't shoot the basketball. That's what you're doing when you just turn the ball over like that especially two times in a row. Jarrell Burns just subbed in for the Monarchs. See if he's any difference here for the Monarch offense. Ethan Morrison on the foul. So Kalina will inbound the ball here. Kalina back at the top of the key. He works around to Baker. There's Jarrell Burns on the inside, and he's good. And that's a nice little pl set play that they had there. Early on, Monarchs up 7-3. to three. Lena works it around. There's Ethan Morrison on the wing. He'll shoot a two. That's no good. And it's rebounded by the Mustangs. Back up and in. And he's a freshman. Two Carter freshmen Lawson. on the floor. A 6'4 freshman, that's one big freshman. Yes. Kalina, thought about it. And Jack Kalina just might be the most athletic player on the floor. Maybe not the best basketball player, 
but definitely jump the highest, run the fastest. Another mental issue there as Ethan Morrison will bring it up. Great defense by I.O. Baker. Great defense by I.O. Baker, but you just can't have those turnovers. There's too many of them early in this game. Driving it in, and there's going to be a foul. Travel, actually, on number 40, Zarek Steed. Mustang showing a 1 2 2 diamond press, try to trap in the corners. There's Doherty at the top of the key. And now, Mustangs are moving out of their traditional man defense, and they just showed a zone right there. We'll see if they stick with that throughout the rest of this quarter. Bad shot there as the Mustangs now with the ball. They'll work the ball around. Steed now, he's gonna drive. Steed draws the foul, he'll go to the line for two. Chad Lickenberg has to not be so lazy there and make sure he gets his feet over and not bail that guy out when he's shooting. Eric Steed now, he'll go to the line for two. It's a seven to five game right now with 2.20 left into the first. The first one's good. That'll be a lane violation. Braxton Murphy comes in for Jarrell Burns. Chad works to Iowa Baker. Doherty inside. He's going to get fouled. West. Great job of got fouled a lot, but he didn't make his free throws. He went four for twelve from the line last night. Let's see if tonight will be any better. And he's off on the first. Capitalizing on free throws is every bit as important as anything else on the court, if not the most important thing. Yes, they're free points that you're not cashing in on. And no good on either one. What could have been a three-point game is still a one-point game now. Steed in for two, and that'll give the Mustangs their first lead of the game. Mustangs still in a 1-2-2 two, two diamond soft press trying to trap in the corners, then they fall back to a 3-2 zone, and that's how you beat it right there with passes around. Murphy regains the lead now for the Monarchs with a minute 30 left in the first. Miller North working the ball around now. Tate Boyer will intercepted. throw it right to Chad's chest. Chad Lechtenberg is good on the, free, on the layup. That's a nice run out for him. Big confidence booster also for the sophomore. A minute left, it's 11 to eight. Morrison's gonna drive. That's great good defense. defense right there, yeah. Doherty with a great block on Higginson. Caleb Pike, he's playing really good defense and there's Murphy now working the ball around. Mustang still in a 3-2 zone. Baker just holding the ball, trying to wind down that last 25 seconds of the first quarter there. Hey, 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 
And now Miller North moves to a man. Pike inside to Lechtenberg. Lechtenberg on the turnaround layup. That's no good. It's in and out. That's the friendly roll. Which is not, not good. good because the Monarchs wanted the last shot of the quarter. And instead of getting the last shot of the quarter, they go and Miller North is shooting free throws. That'll be Coach Higginson. Moore, Coach Moore wanted it their offense to pull the ball out but instead it was a good look but they were going to look for they'd rather have a great look or have the last shot of the quarter so there's Higginson he'll miss the first so Jake Lena back in as well as Jake Grosso making his first appearance Higginson on the second attempt, no good as well. And that's just bad. That's just bad defense, not boxing out. Doherty, the full court shot, no good. So Cal, after one, we have 11 to eight. Monarchs up by three. Very physical game so far, defensively and offensively. Yeah, Millard North is having a tough time making the shots, but that's due to a very good Monarch defense. And Miller North is showing lots of pressure, which is giving making the Monarchs turn the ball over a lot more than they want to. All right, you are. And Ethan Morrison, for the most part, has been shut down. After only three points in the first quarter. He missed three shots, one for four. Monarchs doing a good job of making sure he's not doing anything. You got to thank Caleb Piakowski for that one. Yeah, I think after he hit that first three. I don't think Caleb Pajkowski was having him scoring much more after that. So Pike has played really well defensively. Doherty's also been in there making some plays. And no one really notices, but Jack Kalani does a great job on defense. He doesn't get much steals or just because the guy he's guarding is almost never open. He does a great job. He's one of the best off the ball defenders. Once his guy gets the ball, he might struggle, but his guy is almost never open. And he's always in help defense. He's just one, that's one of the reasons that he's such a great value to this team because of his defense. Like you said earlier, I like what you said. Kalina, not the best basketball player, but probably the most athletic guy right on the floor. And he, he's an all around athlete. He can play any sport you throw him into. And just yeah, does a, he does a great job. Played varsity football his freshman year, was all state in baseball second team all state in baseball and now he's on the starting lineup for the basketball team he does it all so here we go with the second quarter and the mustangs working the ball around early and there's Grosso at the wing as he's going to look for lena might have traveled there doherty steals it it's a two-on-one situation doherty gets fouled and we'll see if he can capitalize on these free throws he's 0 for 2 so far today and Got a chance to regain those two points. Doherty can make it a five point game if he makes both of these. He makes the first. It's a two possession game now. Tent number two is good. Doherty makes up for those two he missed. It's a good job by Tyler to make a mid-game adjustment like that. Iowa Baker playing some four-court pressure. Grosso almost loses it. He'll find Lena. That's no good. I'm gonna call block. It's like a freight train coming in there. And that's mostly muscle. I mean, if you look at Jack Kalina, there's not an ounce of fat on him. Kalina now with the ball at the wing. It's 
Salina down at the baseline. We have an injury on the court there, Cal. It looks like Jake Gross on number 15. Might have hurt his face. It's an injury on the play. Bloody nose. Bloody teeth. Oh, Looks bloody like a bloody nose. nose. Yeah. Oh, game getting physical early here as Jake Grosso dripping from the nose. And I, he wasn't the one taking the charge. He was the one that got hit by the person taking the charge. Wrong place, wrong time. Getting in there for the help defense. And yeah. Doherty playing physical there. So as we settle this injury, coaches will talk it over with their players. So 6.40 left to go here in the second quarter. 13 to eight, the Monarchs up by five. So far, they're just outplaying the Mustangs. Coach Moore right now is explaining that they need to have more skips and more ball movements against this 3-2 zone that the Mustangs have going. They have to cut the mental issues as well. Too many turnovers in the first quarter. And I think that was due to the overpressuring of the Mustangs' man defense. We'll see if the Mustangs go back to that man defense. Well, what was happening But what was happening when they were in that man was a lot of times they were over doing it, over jumping the passing lanes. Led to, we saw Pike with a couple back doors and lots of wide open looks because of so much pressure. Yep, Jarrell Burns even got in there for a nice left handed layup. Yeah, so I, that's, I think that's why they moved to this 3-2 zone. But that's not really doing much either. Jake Grosso just left the court. He was a bloody mess dripping all over the place. And we can hope for a recovery soon. Maybe he can get back in this game before it's over. Uh, Mustangs assistant coaches are trying to clean up the floor right now. Whoever said basketball was not a full contact sport was clearly wrong. Yes, clearly. Basketball is a game that's every bit mental as it is physical, though, and both teams having a few mental issues early on. We'll see how the Millard Mustangs respond to this, losing one of their starting players. Jake Grosso is playing great defense, and now they're going to have to step it up defensively. Ethan Morrison checks in for Jake Grosso. Morrison, that studly player that we were talking about earlier, who's off to a slow start. Jake Lena for the Mustangs really has to step up. He's been missing way too many bunnies. If he had if he has made all of his layups, the Mustangs would be winning by now. Nice drive and a spin move. That's no good though. Kalina with the nice rebound. And there Kalina we, just jumps up there. Yeah, there we see his athletic ability. He got pushed in the back, and he still went up strong, grabbed that rebound. Kalina from the elbow, that's no good. The but Miller, Kalina almost gets his own rebound. And the Miller Mustangs are going box and one on Tyler Doherty. That surprises me. What they're doing is they're having one guy guard Tyler Doherty, man on man, and the rest of their four players are in a zone. Which... This is a great sign for shooters like Braxton Murphy and Caleb Pikehouse who are going to get a chance to get some wide open threes in the next couple possessions. There's Ethan Morrison, no good. Doherty, that's gonna, they're going to go jump ball. I, I'd almost say that was in possession of the Monarchs. Yeah, that was, that was a quick whistle. Either way, the Monarchs will have possession with 5.30 left in the first half. You know, they're playing that boxing one on Doherty. They're trying to make sure Doherty can't get any open looks. He's, he's their big inside guy for the Monarchs. He does a great job. He's very physical. He's probably the most physical player on this team. 
There's Pike in there. He, he loses the ball. It's regained by Kalina. They're going to call a travel on Jack Kalina, though. I don't know what they were trying to do right now, right there. That was just ugly. Another mental issue now for the Monarchs. Yeah, that's up in six or seven turnovers to Miller, to Miller North's one or two. Strobin, right hand batter. But Monarchs defense is really making up for it. Foul going to be called. That was Miller North five will go to the line. That's Sam Hari. The Miller North only has eight points through 11 minutes of play. Neither team is scoring much, but both teams Oscar's being up. Six nothing. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Burness, Fowler, and Tyson scheduled to hit for the big red. Mari's first attempt Locked is no ball. good. Here we go again with those free throws. Those are the most important shots of the game. You're not getting contested. I mean, other than the crowd, there's no factors into you not making a shot. So free throws is a great time to get some easy points, and they miss there. Jarrell Burns, Burns working up, and he loses the ball. Eight turnovers. Wow. Coach, Coach Moore, Moore not, not happy. happy at all. <laughs> Same thought process there between Cal and I. Coach Moore not happy as Jarrell Burns loses the ball yet again. And that's eight possessions that the Monarchs have not even got a look at the basket. Now Monarchs are in the zone. They're playing a little triangle, one, two, two. You can see Jalen Allison moving from top of the key to block to block. There's Jake Lenoff finally capitalizing on a layup and wow, slowing it down a little bit. Piakowski for three, that's no good. Now Ethan Morrison in transition. Dylan Nelson brings it back. And Jalen, one of the fastest people in the entire state. That's why they have him at the top of the zone, running back and forth and going from block to block. There's Jake Lenoff for a nice two and he'll put that one in, makes it a one point game. He has four points and two possessions there to put Miller North right in the game. Coach Moore calls a timeout for the Monarchs. 30 seconds to talk it over between this coaching in this team and so far the Monarchs eight turnovers as you said Cal you gotta wonder you get those eight possessions back and the score could be a lot different yeah I mean that's possible 16 points gotta erase these mental issues now 340 left in the first half it's a one-point game the Monarchs should be happy though that even with eight turnovers, they're playing good enough defense to be winning this game. So here we go with the Monarchs back out on the floor. 3.40 left, first half. And the Mustangs have scored four unanswered points. Good defense being played by Steed. Mustangs no longer in a box and one. Going back to their 1-2-2 two, two look. Piakowski breaking some ankles there. Baker had a good shot at the elbow they didn't take. Yeah, but he does a good job of making the zone collapse on him so that he can hit someone around the perimeter. Or just like that. Chad, Chad Lechtenberg going for the corner. three. No good. There's Jake Lena inside. That's no good. Lena out of bounds. And he just ate the wall. He went face first into the wall. We don't want to see another bloody nose. 
the student section reminding him that there's a wall in here. That Monarch student section has gotten smaller and smaller every game. And yeah, we can really see who the true fans are. Their true colors coming out, and Io Baker now working it around. There's Jalen Allison inside. He'll, he's good. And you can see his athletic ability right there. He jumped very high. Jalen Allison is top five in the state in high jump, top five in the state in sprinting, one of the fastest. He was one of the fastest players in the whole state of Nebraska. Steed for three is no good, and that's going to be Papillion Ball. Jalen Allison is a D1 football player. He's going to North Dakota State to play football. As athletic as Jack Kalina is, you can't forget about how athletic Jalen Allison is. No, you cannot. He's got hops. Just back there, you saw him with his back turned to the basket, jumped about two feet in the air and spun around to shoot it. Isle Baker still has not been subbed out of this game. He's played this entire game so far. An interesting fact about Jalen Allison, his hands are too small to hold a basketball with one arm, so he can't dunk it. He gets up high enough, but his hands are too small to hold the ball, so it clings off the back of the rim every time because he can't hold the ball with his hand. He's only made two dunks but he can almost touch his elbow, elbow to the rim. That's gotta be frustrating for any basketball player. But after those two points, 17 to 12. Announcing the half court shot tickets, those are always fun. Monarchs up five with a minute and a half to play in the first half. This game might come down to the end. So a minute 20 left in the first half and the Monarchs just looking to keep the lead and keep the momentum going in the locker room. So Steed will inbound the ball as Ethan Morrison starts with it. Working around to Nelson now. Morrison's been quiet here in the second quarter. Jake Lenaw. Might have been a travel. But Jake Lenaw either way converting there and he's been a big part of this second quarter for the Mustang so far. Coach Moore wants to pull this out. They want to make them go man to man, and they do. Now they're going to run three game. Kyle Baker now working around. There's Mil Braxton Murphy, and he'll be fouled. 35 seconds left to go in the half. Thirty-five seconds left. Pike, no good. He'll go to the line for two. See if he can cash into these three points. Well, Piakowski is almost automatic here from the free throw line. We'll see what he does on the first attempt. No good. You jinxed him. I jinxed him. Most of the time, he's automatic, I should say, from the free throw line. He's got one of the most pure shots on this game, or on, on this team, in this game, I should say. Second one, no good, wow. Monarch's two for eight on the night. You're not gonna see Piakowski miss, miss many of those. Jalen Allison really pressing the ball up top. And 
The Mustangs might hold for the last shot here in the first half. And he was, Jalen Allison just jumped and he was in the air for a couple seconds. At the buzzer, Jalen Allison puts it in and it's gonna be 19 to 14 going into the locker room. The momentum in the Monarch hands. Yeah, that's not only is a big point for the Squippers, but now they got a whole bunch of momentum going into the locker room. Meet us back here in 10 minutes. Take a break, grab some popcorn, go to the bathroom, do something. We'll be back in 10 minutes. 19 to 14, Monarchs up.
We are back here in Papillion, Nebraska as the Monarchs take on the Mustangs. It's 19 to 14, Monarchs up at the start of the third quarter. And the momentum on the Monarchs side thanks to that buzzer beating shot by Jalen Allison. Yeah, and the story of the game so far has been defense for both sides. Neither team scoring much, it's 14 to 19. Usually scores are in the 20s or 30s at halftime at least. But both teams having an outstanding showing on the defensive end of the floor. The Monarchs have done a great job of shutting down Ethan Morrison of the Mustangs. And if they can continue to do that, they can hold on to a W here today. Yeah, for sure. Coach Moore, the Monarchs head coach, is just a basketball genius. He's been coaching for around 30 years. We, get, we were lucky enough to have him. He was coaching at North Platte, and he, him and his family moved here, and we were lucky enough to ha get him as a head coach. He's just a phenomenal coach. He's been in the program for three years now. So far, we've seen a third place showing in a state tournament, a runner-up in a state tournament, and now he's doing a great job this year with winning a bunch of close games that most of the coaches in the Metro would not have won. So here we go at the start of the third quarter. Coach Moore used to coach our athletics director, uh, Mr. Ryan, back when Mr. Ryan was in high school. So that's an interesting fact about those two and their relationship. He also coached against assistant coaches Andre Watts, Cody Truffles, and Coach Simpson. So. Coach Moore with a lot of connections. Ethan Morrison now, he's gonna drive it in. Pike's played some good defense on him so far. Lena in, Lena, who's been the big part of this offense. Lena's gonna lose it after a bad pass from Nelson. It'll and be Monarch's ball. Yeah, and there's a turnover. Monarchs really need to force those more. Monarchs had way too many turnovers in the first half. Nine in the first half from the Monarchs, only three from the Mustangs. Yeah, they're trying to flip the script on him and the Mustangs turn it over early in the, in the second half. Io Baker with the ball now. Baker from the elbow, that's no good. Ethan Morrison on the wing as they're working their back around. Nelson, Higginson, Steed brings it in, and that gets blocked. And it'll be a foul on Jack Kalina. The block by Tyler Doherty was clean, but Jack Kalina got him with the body. Wow, Tyler Doherty kind of sent that ball to the other end of the court there. Sent it to the tuba. Steed misses the first one, and that student section may be a good part of the reason he missed that. Six and a half left in the third, and Steed will go for his second attempt. He'll miss both. Tyler Doherty with the powerful rebound. Iowa Baker brings it up. There's Piatkowski, he finds. Jack Kalina inside, that's no good. But there's Braxton Murphy with the offensive rebound and yeah, the putback. That's a great job of crashing the board hard. That's just a hustle play by Braxton Murphy right there. Morrison for three, that's not good. Almost an air ball. He's gotta be frustrated with the def defense Monarchs are putting on tonight. He has not seen, Caleb Pajkowski might know what kind of gum he's chewing. And there's Io Baker for a three, makes it a 10 point game and the Mustangs are starting to really lose this one here in the second half. First double digit lead, largest lead for any team on the night. The girls game was never a double digit game, that was always a single digit. Now being offensive foul and the Mustangs just look frustrated the way they came out of this half. Jalen Allison coming back in. He's getting more playing time today than he's gotten most of the year. And he's getting some very solid minutes. 
And there's a timeout from the Mustangs trying to work things out. And he's a tough kid. He's just getting into the basketball groove. The, actually, it was against Miller North in football this year. Jalen Allison broke his collarbone the very first play of the game and didn't tell anyone about it till halftime. He played yeah. two quarters with a broken collarbone. If that's not tough, I don't know what is. Then he was out for a couple weeks. He came back in basketball and the first time he got in the game, got a hard hit and broke it in the exact same spot. Jalen Allison, if you look up tough in the dictionary, you might find a picture of his face. And then he's just getting back in the last two weeks. He's been getting some very solid minutes for the Monarchs. Going back, the reason he's getting those minutes, he's just athletic. Yeah. He's got the athleticism to do things, and he's done a great job. His cousin, Glenn Lewis, played here a couple seasons back. He was also very athletic. He played college football also. One assistant coach for this Monarch squad, um, Tyler Albers, former Nebraska Husker basketball player. And he's a great addition to this coaching squad, bringing in some hands drills and some skills drills. Tyler Doherty's gonna inbound the ball to Io Baker. Baker who just came off that three on their last possession. Mustangs are in with their 3-2 zone still. They're switching defenses pretty frequently. Caleb Piakowski on the baseline. They're gonna call a foul on the Mustangs. 43, that's number 43, Carter Larson, the freshman. Murphy for three. That's and that good, good. And 13 point game now for the Monarchs. And that's six points and two possessions. That's Braxton Murphy's second three pointer of the day. The Monarchs come out of the half on a nice, what is it, 9 0 run? They're on a 8-0 run here in the third quarter. Piakowski for three, that's no good. Almost an 11-0 run. Tyler Doherty gets the offensive rebound, he drives, he's no good. Nelson inside, he's fine, Larson, Larson. Good, the freshman. Murphy with the ball now, he works it around. Tyler Doherty inside. Pikowski for three, no good. And there's gonna be a foul called on Doherty. Doherty's a little frustrated with the physicality of the Miller North Mustangs. You can see him getting beat up down low by all three Miller North big guys. That's got to frustrate you with three guys just beating up on you every time you come down the floor. That's what you got to do to stop this kid. Tyler Doherty is one of the biggest assets to this Monarch team, so Miller North doing a good job of trying to shut him down. Jarrell Burdens comes in after Doherty. Three fouls, two away from fouling out. Jalen Allison with some solid defense there. Lena loses the ball. That's a nice dig by Io Baker. Jalen Allison playing some solid defense as he comes back in. There's Baker, full court pressure. Murphy almost goes out of bounds. Baker now back up at the top of the key as they try to set an offense up with three minutes left to go in the third. Jarrell Burns inside. 
Good move by Jarrell Burns to put two points in. Yeah, that was, that was a strong move to the basket. Oh, Steve takes foul. a hit. He'll go down. He'll go to the line for two. Still no update on Jake Grosso, the uh, Mustang player who had a bloody nose earlier. No update. Doesn't look like he'll be coming back in, though. Steed 0 for 3 now on his free throws. Steed makes that one, so he's 1 for 4. He's got some stylish shoes. They beat the four court pressure fast there. Baker drives. Pajkowski for three. That's no good. Lean on. He gets his own rebound. He gets fouled. Some frustration there. Yeah, he's mad he didn't finish that. He might have been fouled by his own player. <laughs> Down inside was getting pretty clustered. Lena misses the first one. Oh. And Lena makes the second so far here in the second half. Ten. So far in the uh, second half, it's Monarchs are outscoring 10 to four against the Mustangs. And yeah, they only have four points this whole quarter, and there's two minutes and 30 seconds left. The Monarchs have just outplayed here in the third quarter so far. Yeah, it just seems like every loose ball and rebound, the Monarchs just want it a little bit more than Miller North does, which has got to be due to the frustration of the struggle that the Monarchs have had in the last two or three weeks. Nothing's been going their way. It's an 11 point game. The Mustangs have to turn this game around now if they want to come back. You can't wait till the fourth quarter. You want to start a comeback and you have to start it right now. And for the Monarchs, they just got to continue with this momentum. Here we go, back to the action as the Monarchs will inbound the ball. Full court pressure from the Mustangs. Doherty brings it up. They do a good job against that full court pressure. Monarchs have been really smart with the ball here in the second half. Just not a lot of turnovers. Miller North which is from a 3-2 to a 2-3. Monarchs are going from a box set to a high-low look right now. Now they're in their set. Chad Lechtenberg for three. And that's how you beat a zone. Even though, even though that shot didn't go in. Even though that shot didn't go in, that's exactly what the Monarchs are looking at. They swung the ball around, got the ball inside, and got an inside-out look. They keep working like that. A shot will drop. Now the Monarchs with the full court pressure. Steed working it around now. Ooh. Sloppy pass there. Yeah, almost took it away. There's Larson bringing it in. He'll fall. Now be a foul on Braxton Murphy, I guess. Questionable call there, but. Yeah. 
They're trying to get Ethan Morrison to look in the corner, but Monarch saw it coming. Tate Moyer now working it around. Ethan Morrison for three. That's no good. He has just been suffocated tonight. Yes. I, that's, that's the best word for it. He just can't do anything right now. So Baker at the top of the key here. Monarchs want to suck all the players out. And now they, yeah, forcing Miller North to switch to man, which they do. Just trying to hold on the ball here, third quarter. With less than 40 seconds left to go. Pike just holding it there. I think Pike's okay with this. Hey, <laughs> don't pressure me, I don't have to pass it. Jake Murphy Lee now right. trying to guard Braxton Murphy. Doherty with it now. They're gonna call a foul. Three seconds left to go in the third quarter and the Monarchs have the last shot it looks like. Dylan Nelson. Sam Hari are checking in for the junior for the uh, Mustangs. The Marks have 3.5 seconds to get a shot up. And that's gonna be a foul. That foul was before the third quarter ended, so Doherty will go to the line for two. He was fouled on the way up. We'll see if he can capitalize. What's he on the night? Two for two for four, two for six. Six. Two for six so far. Two for seven on the night for Tyler Doherty. Because the first one does not go in. That's five more points that they could have. As time expires. 30 to 18 at the end of three right now. The Monarchs. They have eight minutes to hold on to this 12-point lead. The Mustangs scored four points that entire quarter. Action soon. Eight minutes left to go in this game. 30 to 18. The Monarchs outplaying the Mustangs here in the second half. 11 to 4 was the score in the third quarter as the Monarchs' offense got going early, and the Mustangs no answer to that Monarch offense. They only scored four points. Ethan Morrison continues to struggle. He needs to have a big fourth quarter if the Mustangs come back. See who the Monarchs are going to put on the floor for this last quarter to start. Isle Baker, Jack Kalina, they've all played pretty well. And Murphy's done a good job, so the Monarchs playing as a team right now. The third quarter, not a whole lot of turnovers from the Monarchs. They're cleaning up that mental issue, and we'll see what they can do here in the fourth quarter. I mean, the Monarchs have held the Miller North to six points a quarter per average, on average. That's phenomenal. That's great. They're, I mean, they're outscoring 10 to 6 on average, which is phenomenal, like you said. It's yeah. Exactly needed. Another mental issue for the Mustangs as they almost lose the ball. Steed is good. Murphy now working around the aisle Baker. That ball gets tipped and it's gonna be a Mustang ball after the first turnover of the fourth quarter. 
21. That's number, that's Dylan Nelson who puts it in for the Mustangs. And back to single digit lead for the Monarchs. So the Monarchs are going to call a timeout with exactly seven minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Monarchs up by eight. In one minute, the Mustangs have scored four points and their offense is already looking a lot better. In one minute, they... In one minute, they scored the same amount of points they scored the whole third quarter. So their offense on a roll to start. Looks like the Monarchs just need to clean up some mental issues and try to get back out there. Score a little bit more. Saturday is the senior night for the Monarchs in their last home game of the year. Baker gets the ball. And another mental issue as Baker loses the ball. It's going to be kickball violation. have struggled this year so far is simply they've just lost a lot of talent. Most of their talent last year were seniors. Um, Brett Doherty, you know, Bryce Sheard, Maloli, Spencer Lewis, all great players, but when you have so many seniors on your team, you're losing a lot of talent. There's a three that's not good by Jack Lennon. Well, the Monarchs starting five has no starters that started last year. Which is going to hurt any team, but they've got enough young guys to last them a few years that can make them a lot better. Yes. How many seniors are on that team last year? Eight? Their whole starting lineup was seniors last year. Only five seniors on the team this year and not... And only one of them on the floor. Only one of them, exactly. Only one of them starts. Coach Moore is very frustrated with this team in this quarter. After such, after such a promising third quarter, they're not playing up to their potential in the fourth. After such a promising first three quarters, you know, yeah. I mean, they just outplayed Mustangs for three quarters, and now here in the fourth quarter, when it matters most, the Mustangs are outplaying the Monarchs. Yes. And Steed with another two points. He's got four this quarter. All right. Wow, another mental issue, and Steed gets fouled. He's going to line for two. Yes. To he could bring this to a four point game after being down 13 going into the fourth quarter. Steed's first is good, it makes it a five point game. And Monks will take really a full timeout time to re-talk things over, and Coach Moore's not happy. But on the other hand, Coach Cannon is very happy. So five minutes and 37 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter, and the Monarchs have not scored yet in the fourth quarter. They've just been playing very poorly so far. They're gonna have to start capitalizing now. And the Monarchs only up by five after they started this quarter up by 12. Mustangs are going to come back out to shoot their second free throw for Zarek Steed.
They're putting Chad Lichtenberg in to try to get a little energy off the bench. Even though he does have, he has some issues and he always is going 100%. And sometimes that gets a little bit too fast. Shout out to Patrick Murphy, Prax Murphy's father, for tweeting at Jordan Murphy. Jordan Murphy. Jordan Murphy, father. I should say, rather, for tweeting at PLHS broadcast. Sorry for the mix-up there. That's a questionable call right there, but yeah, questionable. very questionable. That puts the Miller North Mustangs into the bonus now. But questionable or not, Miller North basketball. Fusion there, but the Monarchs get the ball. Wow, the ball was all over the place. It looks like a circus. As I was saying earlier, I got a little interrupted. Sorry about that. Chad Lechtenberg is always going 100%, which can be good and bad. Yes. Sometimes you don't want to be going full at 100% because you're a little bit out of control. But he brings a lot of energy on the defense and offensive side of the floor and that he never slows down. Lucky for Chad, he's a sophomore, so that's just gonna come with experience, controlling more. Wow, <laughs> awkward pass there. Steed's gonna take it inside. Three attempt is good. That's and it's a two point game and going into the quarter, they were up 13. Wow, a 10-0 run here in the fourth quarter. Jarrell Burns is gonna take it in. They're gonna call a blocking or a pushing foul. Four thirty left. The Mustangs have all the momentum on their side. Lechtenberg thought about it, didn't take it. And that's a foul. Both teams will be in the bonus now. Shooting a one and one now. Will be Jarrell Burns. Jarrell Burns is good on the first, and that gives the Monarchs their first points of the fourth quarter. He's got some rainbow socks on. Those are pretty stylish. Those are stylish, I like those socks. Burns for his second attempt. That's good. Automatic. Braxton Murphy coming back in now. Jalen Allison jumped so high, he nearly touched the ball there. Touched the ball, almost touched the sky. <laughs> Close enough. Four minutes left here in the game, working the ball around now. Nice pass. Lean on, no good, he gets his own rebound, he goes down hard. And he'll be at the line shooting one and one. Lino's gonna shoot a one and one as that was not a shooting foul. Lino is good on the first, he'll get a second. The 
second one is also good for Lena. It's a two point game now, 344 left. And Cal, 12 to two is the score of this quarter so far. Mustangs have outscored them 12 to two. Yeah, and that just can't happen. If the Monarchs want to hold off for the rest of this game, they need to change the pace. Miller North, they're playing at Miller North's pace right now and they need to play at their pace, whatever they want that to be. But Miller North has complete control over this game right now. Baker's gonna go for a one and one. Baker's first is good. So far, the only points being scored for the Monarchs in this quarter have been off free throws. Baker good. Four for four the Monarchs are on free throws so far here in this quarter. Ethan Morrison almost loses it. Baker now gonna take it in for a layup. He gets it, the first field goal for the fourth quarter for the Monarchs. That's a nice finish and little transition the Monarchs have and now they're playing more at their pace. Hands straight up for Doherty and he can test that shot perfectly. Three minutes left, it's a six point game and almost a reach in I would almost call there but now they're gonna call it on Doherty. Shooting one and one. Refer Moyer. Referee telling Coach Moore that he missed the call, but I don't really think Coach Moore cares. I think he wants the call called next time. Coach Moore replies with the you owe me one. While well, sitting here right next to the coaches, it always has its own entertainment. Doherty with his fourth foul is going to be subbed out. They don't want him to foul out. The first attempt, no good. Jarrell Burns with the rebound. Working the ball around the Monarchs are. Good defense being played by the Mustangs. Murphy now. Great pressure from Lena. Pajkowski's back in the game. Less than two minutes and 20 seconds left. They're gonna call a foul, and that'll be the 10th foul, so a double bonus. Pajkowski's shooting two. Oh, still shooting a one and one, as that was the only the ninth, not the 10th foul. My mistake. Pike's first attempt. That's no good. It's gonna be and another foul. Be another called. foul. Now free throws on the other end of the floor. This game might come down to free throws. Now that sends the Mustangs into the double bonus. Lena has been great from the free throw line today. His last four he's made. Yes. And what happened? And what happened? Leon puts that one in. Now a five point game with two minutes left. Played a role in this. I wonder if he is known uh, by the school officials. At Lena's second Party attempt to make it a four point game. Constitutionalist kid. I wonder, is good. I wow, Lena automatic. He's six for six here in the fourth quarter. If that played any role at all with our, 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 our That's going to be a foul. And now Jalen's going to go more double free bonus. Everybody was defending. The longest five seconds ever. <laughs> And this is the point of the game where two, in, two minutes and 10 seconds is really 10 minutes and two seconds. 
<laughs> and that's his fifth foul, and so he'll be out for the night. The freshman Carter Larson will sub in. Jalen will shoot two. First one, no good from Jalen Allison. It's almost hard for Jalen Allison to shoot because of how small his hands are. <laughs> Jalen's good on the second one. He needs the mini Burger King Whoppers. Yeah. Wow, and over the back call, over and back call, not called there. Yeah, that he, should have been a backcourt violation. He blatantly went over the line and came right back. Yeah. That three attempt, no good. Jalen Allison goes sky high to grab that rebound. I mean, the hops on this kid, there's no, no reason, no wonder, rather, that he's a high jumper. I think he went higher than the sky on that one. Minute and a half left, Monarchs up five. Braxton Murphy will go into the line. Murphy now shooting two. Minute 26 left to go in this game and the first one does not fall. Thirty-seven to thirty-two with a minute twenty-six. Murphy's second attempt. That one no good by Murphy. Murphy 0 for two coming away there. Free throws. They need yeah. to start making those. I mean, yeah. if they would have made every free throw they've missed, this would be like a twenty-point game. Oh, de definitely. They're, it's just terrible. They're outing on the free throw line tonight. Steed no good, and Jarrell Burns with a good rebound there. And another foul. Jarrell Burns, who's been automatic from the free throw line. We'll see if he can put two away. Minute 10 left, Jarrell goes to the line for two. He's 100% here from the free throw line. Two for two, and see if Rainbow Sox can do another one. I jinx him again. It's all right. Maybe on the free throws, I'll just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> the second attempt. It's automatic there. 38-32 with a minute 10 left. Coach Moore getting fired up. And Steed now working the ball around. Great shot there by number 21, Dylan that's Nelson. A, that's a crafty little floater right there. Not many people have that in their book of tricks. That was some Steve Nash move right there. For sure. Is Steve Nash still playing? <laughs> yeah. God, he's like 62, right? Oh, something like that. But yeah, he's with the Lakers. Lakers are struggling right now, but I've always been a Steve Nash fan. I love Stevie. Yeah, he's a great basketball player. He's a little old though. I feel like if he got fouled, he'd turn into dust. Yeah. But with 50 seconds left, the Monarchs up by four. We're gonna have a barn burner on our hands. Fifty seconds left, and uh, the Monarchs just need to hold on to this lead. They've played a pretty poor fourth quarter. They've been outscored 16 to eight here in the fourth quarter. They just need to keep playing the way they played in the last two minutes. They'll come away with a victory. But the Miller North Mustangs, 
The big story for the Mustangs today is Ethan Morrison has been almost non-existent. He had their first three points and he has not had a single point since. Nope. It's been a long time. That first shot was money and ever since then, he hasn't had breathing room. And a lot of that you have to think, uh, Caleb Piakowski, Caleb Piakowski's been all over him. He's been on him like wide on rice. The Monarchs ball as it was knocked out by the Mustangs. Jarrell Burns leaked out. If Jack Klein was saw, it might have been a dunk. Jarrell Burns, one of the few guys on this team who can dunk. He's got bigger hands than Jalen. <laughs> yes. Nice move by Io Baker. Io Baker loses the ball. Not a good time for him to lose it. 40 seconds left. Iowa Baker reaches in there and he'll steal it now. Iowa Baker with a great steal. Up to Piakowski. Jarrell Burns on the other end. And he'll get picked. Loses the ball, but he keeps it. Piakowski gets fouled and he'll go to the line for two. And not only does he get to the free throw line, but they wasted about 10 seconds off the clock that Miller North did not want to happen. Twenty-two seconds left. If Piakowski can put two of these in with twenty seconds left, that will help the Monarchs tremendously. The first one for Caleb will fall. Nothing but net. It's a five-point game now. Piekowski puts both in. So now with less than 20 seconds left, Mustangs have to score quickly. Morrison with a long three, Jimmer for debt range, and that one's good. Wow, coming in clutch there. And that's, you know, I don't know how he guard that. He was pretty far out. That's just a good shot by Ethan Morrison. That was some Jimmer for dead stuff right there. Yes. Well, 40 and to 37 now, and the Monarchs, they got to get into the hands of somebody who can make free throws. Yeah, it's going to come down to free throws. These next, once they get it in, Millinor's going to foul, and the next two free throws will be crucial. They so. at least have to make one of them make it a two possession ball game. Kayla Piakowski, Jarrell Burns, those are the type of guys you want going to the line at this point. Braxton Murphy even. Yeah, but Doherty has not made him. Io Baker even, I mean, he, he made a few earlier today, so. Try to get in the hands of your best pure shooters. And it looks uh, like just by their body language that this play is drawn up to get Caleb Piakowski the ball. That would be a, a smart decision anyway. But, wow, great defense. Kalina's going to call a timeout. Very smart timeout called by Kalina. And that was not a very productive timeout right there as they're not able to get the ball in the bounce. Miller North played some tough defense there. Now the Monarchs have to draw up something else to do.
So with 13.4 seconds left, Monarchs have got to inbound the ball and get into the hands of the right person. It'll be interesting to see what they do out of this timeout. go they drawn up something different and their formation's a lot different and they get the ball into Isle Baker who will get fouled right away only takes one second off the clock and now they'll be checking in Jalen Allison going an offense defense look Jalen Allison will come in on defense and the next dead ball an offensive player will sub in almost like hockey and the Monarchs are not sending anyone to the free throw Rebounding team and Baker shooting two. Baker no good on the first one. If he can make the second one a four point game, that'd be critical. The Monarchs are probably shooting less than 50 per, they are shooting less than 50% on the night, which is never good. It's just, it's horrible, these are the easy points. Baker, no good on either one. 10 seconds left in the game. And Ethan Morrison throws it up, that's no good. And time, time has expired, expired and the Monarchs, Monarchs win. win by three. What a great ending to this game. Barn Borner. Thanks Kyle, I had fun with you tonight. It was a fun broadcast. The Monarchs went 40 to 37. Put it on a W after a couple losses. Thank you very much. Tune in with us next week. Good win for the Monarchs. I'm Kyle Cephas, alongside me, Cal Matheson, and we'll see you next time.